I wanted to kind of take you through it. I want to give you a bit of insight as to how the business actually works. weird angle. I can't be bothered to adjust it. Just scrolling through my morning emails, which is my number one rule not to do while I'm drinking my coffee. How adorable is this? I just saw this. Michelle Kennedy, you are so nice. Look, an email just saying, how is everything going? Here if you need anything. I love women entrepreneurs. They are so kind and thoughtful and share everything from contacts to advice to being, I can't film from this angle. Right, what have we got in store? Today's AMRAP. Okay, okay, not okay, not okay, not okay. To the gym gods, may this workout be short, quick, and painless. <laughs> Right, so we are washed, fed, showered. We're actually not fed, that's a lie. I'm lying to you already. I'm gonna write my to-do list. It's a bit late, a bit of a late uh, to-do list up, but better late than never, 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 never. So stuck on choosing colors for products currently I'm choosing two times colors for two different fabrics to release at the same time and we've never done that before we usually do like a skin luxe drop or a core drop or like whatever but at some point next year which I will not tell you we're doing like a two fabric drop in two different colors each so they have to have different color palettes between them but fit well together so I've got the lab dips here so basically I'll get lab dips from the factory via our head of product which will be like a color palette we've agreed on and then we'll lab dip colors either side of those so we have a bit of a because sometimes something looks like something on a pantone and then when you actually see it on the fabric you're like no 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 this will not work i'm so stuck <laughs> so I'm putting that on pause for now because I asked to call I had a product because at 12 we have the spring summer walkthrough. You know, we've chosen all the colors, we've chosen fabrics, we've chosen like how the collections sit together, but it's really important as a product company that like everyone from the brand team to the customer service team to the operations team know, you know, like what's coming out, can get excited about the pieces. What I'm gonna be doing during the call, I usually never multitask during calls because I think it's really important not to and to concentrate and otherwise you get off the call and you're like, what was said um i am going to be doing the approval so i'll show you how i do it right so this is the type of thing i get like it's the whole folder of basically like every single shot on the location shoot so i'll like go through all of these essentially and i will download each one that is like approved and then i'll make zero approved location and it takes fucking ages, but things like this and attention to detail like this are what makes your business special. So we move. Which Shelly Tubby is red? It is. Poe. Yeah, Tinky Winky's purple. Which Shelly Tubby is red? You talk to Siri so much. Right, we're logging on to a call, so keep that rinsing <laughs> for a minimum. Hi, everyone. Hello. Um, so if we start off, what we're trying to do is slowly get to a point of quickly rather than slowly but it feels like it's slowly <laughs> where we actually start running a proper critical path so that we will start this a lot earlier and we'll start with you know having a, a proper kind of strategy and then breaking that down into collections but it all starts normally with you know the color the trends the feel the mood that kind of thing so we're doing everything a bit back to front but 
this is starting to become a bit more kind of realised. Um, so it's always, you know, grounded with black and blue and it might not be a brown, it might be a red or it could be a khaki, but this is very much the flavour of the spring-summer grounded palette. You know, the, the violet that we've had has been a great success and these are mutating into sort of the digital lavender, which is a slightly different tone, the iris flower. So... Um, they don't suddenly go off kilter and, you know, drop a brand new colour. There's still mint that's around, but it's just a different tone of mint. So then um, what Chantal did was she was just kind of setting the scene, I guess, in terms of where we are as a brand and, and where we want to move to and, and what, what, you know, what makes us taller. And I think, you know, this, this piece around... Um, performance and fashion and the merging of the two together so it's almost like the gym to the street styles that's what's really important and I think at the moment that's very much you know Tala's DNA so it's about the fact that you can lounge in them but you also can wear them to the gym so it's this hybrid dressing which is really um, strong and then I think we were just talking about the fact that as a brand you know we want to be timeless and you know, we are, we have an edge to us, but we are also, you know, we're not fast fashion. So I think this um, slide here kind of represents that timelessness. It's it's simple, which is really important. It's, it's soft, it's kind of feels quite luxurious and it has an edge to it that has, you know, a nod towards fashion, but it's not fast fashion. And, and I think this was really what this slide was about. And then again, we move into sort of the foundation wear. So we're looking at um, starting off a collection that we'll go into that's more about um, day wear, but it can be worn um, if you want to do kind of more soft activities like yoga. You know, seamless is now becoming very much like lounge as well. And, you know, people don't really wear constructed bras like in the way that they used to. And also, I think one of the big points as well is flattering. Like you still want it yes. to, you don't want to be compromising how it looks. You know, you need to be able to balance that comfort, flattery, and support. So um, that's the challenge, right? Is that yeah. being supportive at the same time? Exactly. And this was just, again, just to talk about something that's really being pushed a lot um, in, you know, in the trends. It's about, so indigo, it because it's natural, it's natural dye, you know, it tends to lend itself more towards, you know, sort of denim and fabrics, like woven fabrics, but it's very much coming through in active wear as well. And I suppose it's where you can cross dye the yarns, um, you can whiten to them. So it's almost got that denim -y look. So again, this is something potentially we'll explore in high summer um, because there's a couple of collections still that um, we've got to develop. Is it an actual indigo, Jess? So... I don't think all of this is. I think it's more a mood board to talk about indigo. Mm -hmm. But I think if we were to do this, we would want to do it in a very sustainable way. So, it, you know, we could look at actually dyeing. So if we did it with, if we decided we wanted to do it with fleece, we would do indigo dyeing. So it's a natural dye. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I don't think we should do it. I think one of the things that actually makes it quite different from sort of true, more active wear brands is the colours that we use. So the colours that are normally pitched for, you know, the likes of that's all the, all the colours that are coming through are very much like fuchsias and magentas and um, like verdigris green. And so it's a lot more vivid and kind of punchy and in your face. And they might break this down with black, but Tyler's always been quite a muted colour palette and it's yeah. always sold on paler colours really well. And I think that's great because it makes us more kind of individual. Yeah, I think also there's a there's a timelessness to that as well. It's that, you know, we're, we're able to we're able to provide an area that people can buy into parts of trends that they like, but in a way that isn't so flash in the pan that becomes, you know, obviously it's all about consumer habits, but ultimately we need to be providing those alternatives so when people do want a new green they can buy into it without it needing to be something that they'll be bored of next season so it's being able to participate without creating that kind of want it now don't want it next season type mentality exactly um so i don't know grace if you want to just talk about fabric and where you were at in terms of the softness and yeah versus the skin large do you want to just sort of set the scene on that and we can go through then the individual yeah um, absolutely so so as everyone knows i'm very very excited about this collection more so excited as soon as we had the fitting where we tried on the kind of latest samples um this is essentially the answer to 
I guess, ultimate athleisure. So kind of the idea of this is it is the epitome of athleisure. So it's it's kind of your favorite legging that you'd love to wear to yoga, but it's also the legging that you grab when you want to grab a pair of black leggings and wear on the everyday. And that is just, I guess, the case when creating something that is so essential um, and so easy to wear and really flattering and ticks all the boxes. So that's kind of been built out, obviously, into a wider collection by Jess with some really interesting pieces, including some more more flattering we've got a very almost a racy um it's been made slightly less racy since i tried it on and poor jess <laughs> got quite the eyeful um and um kind of that really flattering yoga look that we <coughs> haven't necessarily kind of done yet and as you can see the the color palette that we envision going forward for this is very muted um and it's all about that kind of yogi essentials i can wear this every day no matter kind of what color it is um and that's built out in a wider sense but the the in general is really it's relatively similar to the skin lux in terms of the handle but actually the way that the shapes and the color scheme will differ um i think will have that real differing for the kind of customer in terms of the way they wear it for example you know the elasticated waistband they don't have that it's very it's very kind of naked feel if you tried the pants it's very comparable to those and i fully believe this will be the legging that everyone will be grabbing when they need kind of in the morning and almost I also think, the one yeah. that people stop wearing to work out because it's so their favorite legging and they don't want to be washing it every day yeah skin lux tends to be when we go for it it's a bit more kind of on trend yeah so it's got higher necklines it's got kind of almost more fashion cuts whereas this is more traditional it's cleaner it's more simple it's more timeless i think what will be really interesting i actually think now that the that i call it the yeah, <laughs> bra. but um, the the v, v bra, I actually think that's going to sell out. Like I having just, agree. we saw it on Friday, and I don't know what you think, Sarah, but I just, it, I, it's amazing. You can do. We we did a down with dog in it, so you can actually, uh, you know, you can exercise in it, but it just looked fantastic, and I think. You know, it would look great with a pair of jeans and a jacket. It's really versatile. So this this drop at the moment, where it's dropping for um, Mary. So then the next um, story is launching in. My so I guess the concept behind this is that when you look at the idea of kind of timelessness and what you want from the pieces that are all, you know, your favourite pieces in your wardrobe that are, are the same kind of year in, year out, there is very little sustainability in that space. I guess the main part of sustainability is the fact that, you know, they're your favourite pieces and you wear them again and again, which is fantastic. But if you can't buy these with sustainable fabrics anywhere or sustainably and I think they produce, then that obviously creates a problem because it means that you obviously just think, oh, well, I'll wear these this many times and therefore um, I'm happy to kind of buy them from anywhere. The concept behind this is to create an essentials collection um, of those kind of timeless pieces that you wear every year and kind of will never get rid of um, and create um, an amazing fabric that feels that kind of essential based on the concept that, you know, Arze has done fantastically well and kind of continues to do so and is a is just essentially the perfect t-shirt. So being able to um being able to build that out into a collection that is not just sustainable in its kind of fabrication but also in its use um is really exciting. And the ethos here is to be able to create a full collection but also ultimately a full brand where you can go to get all of your essentials for this kind of active relaxed lifestyle that we that we know our customers wear and we'll be ticking all those boxes for them uh, are we expecting our existing customers to buy into these new drops or are we expecting our profile of customer to start to change so i think a big piece here is obviously recognizing that next year will be a huge area of growth for us so a lot of that will be based on acquisition um we know that we're you know we're upping the ante really in every area whether that's new fabrications or um the amount of drops the amount of colors etc etc so it'll really be the whole a huge part of i guess the whole year is about customer acquisition as we, as we said you know we're seeing that structured combined with a hoodie and all of that and if that's becoming you know more acceptable in the way people work when they're working from home or working from the office it's less about is this active wear or is this not active wear it's more about is this comfortable does this fit into the way i like to dress and like to feel um and kind of all of that so 
we're, you know, we're not about to start producing jeans, for example, but there are certain things that fit into the categorization that we, we believe, you know, we should do and our current customer, whether it's strictly activewear or not, will resonate strongly with. So the micromodal cellulosic, and that comes from um, a FSC basin. So it's not, they're not cutting down trees to um, make this, you know, make the wood pulp basically. So, and that's the key. It's, it's important that we know that it's done in a sustainable way. They're finding out more and more about the plants and how much the plants like do that and which plants are better at doing it. And then they'll be planting more of those. Yeah. So I think it's, it's kind of in quite early stages still. Yeah, which is fascinating. And that's so that's great for us to be able to work with them and register our interest in trying new technologies as well. Um, so that when, you know, when they find things, they're able to um, share with us and we can think of we can think of how we can make that exciting. So the concept is that, you know, our core has been an essential part of our business for a few years and um, and has really been what the customers loved um, for good reason. Um, and the concept essentially is to be able to evolve it um, as the industry is evolving to more lightweight, seamless looks to where everyone's doing seamless to be able to create something um, that's still really special and still very taller and has our DNA in it, um, but is able to kind of tick those boxes that we also see elsewhere. We're also, I think one of the important things is the mall of it um, will make it feel quite different from core um, when having like white threads um, woven through it. It gives it a bit of more of a kind of like dynamic 3D look. What I'll do is I will pop this into the buying um, Spring Summer 22 shared drive now. And we'll add at some point and maybe we can layer our later, isn't it? Oh my God, I'm having nightmares about Anyway, yes, yes. <laughs> Don't worry, Grace. It's all fine. <laughs> Sounds fine. Sounds fine. Yeah, you don't sound like you're about to have a breakdown <laughs> at all. It's all fine. And next coming up will be new limited edition and um, and lifestyle. <laughs> and that is going to be life changing. Like I, I can't even think about it because it, too, it makes me too excited. Are we sure there are no more questions in terms of any of the collections, colours? Customer, anything at all? Not at the moment. Yeah? Fab. Well, a huge thank you to Jess. I've got Edamame beans. I can feel they're fucking still in the pods. We move, we're gonna make them anyway. Right, I'm just gonna make a quick salad for lunch. So I've just got some baby jam, some tomatoes. Where's my head? So sorry. How dare I not show you my forehead? I've put Beyond Burger in the microwave. She's singing to me right now. So I'm gonna do her on the hob. Um, what a sentence. Um, I'm gonna cut up some tomatoes, put some pomegranate seeds in, pop some edamames in. I've got about 20 minutes to make this, so chop chop. <laughs> If you say that this isn't the sexiest salad you've ever seen in your life, then I don't believe you. It is inspired by a by Chloe quinoa taco salad. RIP by Chloe, love you. So I am gonna eat my lunch quickly and then I'm gonna call our head of product to make some decisions on those colours because those things can just drag on forever and you have to be able to let them not, even though it drives me insane because it has to be perfect. But I hope you enjoyed listening to what I could show you of our spring summer 2022 kickoff. So that's at the stage where like the designs are done, orders are placed for some of them but not all of them. Such an exciting point within the company and I kind of wanted to show you to see. It's mad actually like if you think back to even when the business was like a year old like we had like one product line really and some coming out here and there. We are now at the stage where we're growing into a full-blown business which is crazy and over the next year we're like on the growth train like we want Tala to get to the world we want everyone to be able to stop shopping from non-sustainable fabrics non-ethically produced fabrics um and we want people you know no matter where they are on their sustainability journey to understand that they don't need to compromise and they don't need to essentially pay a heavy premium to move from non-sustainable active wear 
to um, sustainably and ethically produced activewear. So we've been very much catering to our existing customers and growing a bit beyond that. But the next stage for us is like huge customer acquisition. You'll see more frequent releases. You'll see ones that aren't even talked about online. You'll see um, a lot of different kind of changes. And that's not because it's not to the same people. Like we don't want people to shop every drop. We say that kind of all the time. We're widening the net of where kind of Tala is out to and we're expanding essentially. So that means that there's a lot more excitement in store. Um, as I mentioned in like my Q&A, we had so little going on in the first half of this year because of COVID and a number of other reasons. This past year was about really like building the foundations for where we want to go. And this next year is about actually starting to take off on that like rocket ship to get there. So it's really fucking exciting. It's also terrifying. It's a whole new way of doing things. It's a lot of a bigger operation um, and um, it's really, really exciting. So yeah, we essentially want to make it that why the hell would you buy non-sustainable equivalents when you can get ours, which are pretty much the same price point. We always have to use state-of-the-art factories because of the ethics and sustainability we stand by. So often the quality is way better as well, but it's really exciting and it is crazy to be at the stage where we're actually like next stop takeoff. Scary, um, but I better eat my salad. Beyond Burger is unbelievable. Like it's so good. As someone who fucking loved meat before I went veggie and then vegan, it is so good. Hi. Hello. So, I think what's really important, because we've now moved the phasing and we've got both and the skin lux coming yeah. in. The way that I kind of saw it was very much that the, you know, that because the is more yoga, more neutral, more like soft in palette, we kind of make the step change with the um, skin lux. To being bright. Because I think we definitely do the skin lux. Yeah, I think that's great. And then I think that we, I think we, you're right that needs to be somewhere. Well, let's go for that then. Let's do, let's do in the skin lux and then and skin. yeah yeah i think that's good i think those are gonna fly right so i'm just about to go to the meeting basically oh i've got a hoodie underneath this that's why it looks a bit bigger um but i can't decide basically i've got these like military boots on so i've got like this like super military -y kind of like laura croft vibe or i wear this with like a long puffer coat I'm obsessed with this coat. Like, actually, let me take you into different lights. Okay, so the aim of these was to get like, like fuck designer coats. If you look at sustainability in the outerwear space, it's fucking shambles. And then anything that's like remotely good at keeping you warm, also well produced, all of that is like three, 400 pounds. We spent a really long time developing these and they are honestly, you can see like the detailing. Like look at even the lining. I don't think I've ever been proud of anything in my life. We fucking smash this out the park and the factory is incredible. I went on such a ramble, but I can't decide whether to wear the long one or even, I like mixing like like the cream one. I feel like that could look really good with like the rest of the outfit. Yeah, that's a vibe, isn't it? So maybe I'll do this. I'm so proud, I'm so proud. She's protected, she's ready. She could go into battle any minute, but it could also snow and she'd be fine. Oh, it looks so good on you. <laughs> good morning. I decided not to work out this morning because my legs were hurting too much to the point that I was screaming walking down the stairs. So I instead, because I'm heading to the super drug store this morning to actually see the stuff. And I'd like to introduce you to Lexi. 
Hello! <laughs> this is Lexi, she's my amazing EA. Okay, we're going to go to the Croydon Superdrug store now because that is the like head store. I genuinely believe this is one of the best things we've ever done. A health icon. So we've just come back from Superdrug. Don't look at me like that. You live in this house because of this job. Don't shake your head. You also drink the shreddy supplements. Shit. No, they don't. That's not why you ask for new ones every month. Dickhead. Okay, back to normal programming. So we just come back from um, Superdrug, which was amazing. It was so surreal to see everything out there and it just looked so good. It's amazing because that was like one of the first categories that we were really like, like we need to go into it because the industry's way of doing it, like all vegan protein shit, like all the packaging shit, um, none of it looks nice, like all of that. But I still didn't know whether it was like the right thing to go into because any diversification or like whole new category is absolutely terrifying going into his business um but yeah i mean i guess with the product itself we just got it right and um went into that and then having that on everyone's local high street is amazing we're going to add a store locator into the site so you can see where your local one can be you can go down and try it so i have so much work to do so what i'm going to do is um i whizzed through a lot of the like tick 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 stuff i need to do this morning and now i'm going to take my laptop down to a cafe and work there because i just need to like put my phone away headphones in and just like whiz through everything zig hello baby Hi, honey. Hiya. Can I just get an iced oat latte to start? Yes, thank you so much. It is two o'clock, so we are here. So half past for calls that I need to prep for. Um, I often put like a half an hour block before, and I've got a call there. Then I've got two interviews. I'm interviewing two people for the Shreddy team, so that's four and four thirty. She just been whizzing through loads of things. I do like a little arrow when I've de delegated it, rather than doing it myself, because often I have things on my list and I'm like, no, that should be delegated. Just um, approving the feed plan for our new launch which you would have seen done by now that will be the teaser and then there'll be a lookbook post as well um, but that isn't quite done yet so for each new launch we'll also have a full marketing plan which has outstanding actions we need to do campaign aims what we're getting to by collection summary campaign key messages supplier copy supplier notes accreditations website email so then we've got the collection summary collection key messaging it's like very much like a duvet code so like even like basically just like everything you need and then add key messages for our paid spend which the digital marketing team will deal with and so the ads you'll see on Facebook on Google search and everything and so here I've said like lots of concentration on pockets and every single detail and the breakdown please is my computer dirty yes do we have visuals of what the insulation etc actually looks like like we've gone for the best technology in terms of like what we can do sustainably like so I want to be able to show the consumer exactly how it keeps you warm because they're really fucking warm that education piece has been turned into like this type of thing like actually sharing with the customer what you need from a coke because we think that's really important when it comes to actually shopping like it's so easy just to buy something based on the fact that it looks nice but if you're buying a winter coat that you want to last you for ages we want to show you exactly what makes our coats like a fucking duvet that you can walk around with that you can keep for years I'm gonna get the spicy doll to make me feel better. So we also have like building blocks for the whole season and then we'll have um, essentially like the things, what colours they come in, how many units we have, the cost of buy, buy it selling, intake margin, all of that. So to give us the information we obviously need and this is all done like ages before obviously when the buy is put in which will be, I think this was in like April that we put this in so we can see how it like affects the business essentially or like when we need to pay for things, how much we need to sell through to cover costs like all of that we're also doing about um, one app update a week at the moment so you can see here like a new update online this afternoon so I'll just look over basically this will all have been approved um, based on what we need to fix um, or update um, and then these fixes will go out really regularly because we have an amazing dev team on it the satisfaction of those ticks is unmeasured hello nice to see you nice to see you have you had a good day did you work hard did you make me some money no no, another month of you not paying your rent? <laughs> Come home to a nice set of fabrics. Ooh, hello loves. Um, so I have just done my work at the cafe. 
what did I have this afternoon? I had a call with my PR company and then I also had two interviews for, as I said, for a role at Shreddy. In terms of interviews, I used to be so nervous to interview people, but I feel like now over the past few years, you just very much like get used to it. And if you have a deep understanding of the role they're gonna do, then it kind of just makes sense as a conversation. And if they're at interview stage, usually it's because they have the aptitude or have the experience. And then um, what I'll do after that is I'll write uh, right up to either whoever's hiring for it. So if it's their line manager or it, yeah, it completely depends on the setup, but I wrote an email after basically with like decisions or not decisions or whatever to the team of people who are hiring for it or who had put them forward for an interview to me at that stage. I don't interview everyone. <laughs> I only interview direct reports or people that I think it's really important that I like see them and get to know them. Now I need to choose some colours, but I'm not quite sure what what for. And I've sadly cancelled my ice skating for tonight, which I was so excited about. I just know that I'm feeling like this because I'm run down. And really what I should do is be horizontal. Hi. Oh, hello. Um, I just thought I'd call you. I've just got the lab dips. I just wanted to double check. So these are for Yeah. Um, and do we have do we have an estimated colour palette already or no because we're adding them in? So basically, the, so the hit that we're going to have before is the colours, you know, the the ones that are coming in endlessly and the and the, and the so they're the ones that are coming in for November. What well, which one do you which one are you thinking? I don't know. I'm stuck. There are too many colours. I've never had this much release in this much time. It's hard because I haven't got them now, but I, I think I would go personally for the If you're worried, you could go for the But I'm worried that the is going to look quite grey. Yeah. How um how big is the buy? So I can ask her. Yeah, could you yeah, ask? Yes. I'm not against going for the and waiting the buy towards the Yeah. So maybe we just do secondary colour. Yeah, okay. The fabrics are basically for the performance and then I just sent you a couple of because they're just their key fabrics that they use. They're polyester, they're not nylon, but that's yeah. fine. Okay, so this is, I can feel it. This is their, this is their fabric. I can feel it. Okay, so what are we saying? Did you do then? With the Yeah. Me. Okay, perfect. And I'll send you the buy so that you know. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Right, thank thank you. you. Bye. <laughs> He's like my intern. Ziggy, have you got that report prepared for me? Oh my god, I look like I've been bawling my eyes out and like a clown. Um, I'm gonna sign off what is potentially the longest vlog of all time. I feel like there's been so much content. Like the past two vlogs I've showed you have been very like specifically like the same day and I want to show like a more realistic representation of what it actually looks like to be having a fashion brand, to be running it at this stage based on kind of where we are, where we're going. As I've said, like a, a lot of our next year will be about serious growth and it's meant that like over the past year and a half, like the operations of it have just absolutely exploded and it's a well-oiled machine, which is really exciting. But I feel like that's all happened when I've been like offline, well not offline, can't really give myself that credit, can I? Um, so I hope that was insightful. If there's anything that you'd like to see, let me know. And um, I don't have much to say. I need to be horizontal for at least seven years. I'll see you in 2028. So long, farewell, auf Wiedersehen, au revoir, konnichiwa. Is that hello?